Of course, and the chief as well was warning this, us about this, that the winds have really caused a lot of havoc in this fire. And now as we look at this, this inferno, quite literally, uh, of a building, it is just terrifying to think of anybody still left inside there. And I know that was the chief's top priority a moment ago. He said he was going in to, to make sure that there was no one left inside that building. We can only hope that that is indeed the case. Well, as and we, we can, see debris falling off right. the side. We can only hope as well that the firefighters who are inside and the chief had mentioned, you know, they have to go in for a search and rescue and what a frightening thing to do, but it's what they've been trained to do, of course, all these uh, years. They'll jump into a situation like that, uh, race inside that building with it completely involved like that and begin to search the place just to make sure you could always have someone who is you know, just deathly afraid of fire and smoke and they hide themselves in a closet. And so until they f hear someone saying, hey, you know, we're a firefighter, come, you know, come on out. And now you can see the building from the side and really get some sense that the floors are beginning to buckle now. The ceiling has collapsed. The roof has collapsed. And uh, you just get some sense of how dangerous it is inside that building right now. As we look at the top two floors, just about completely gone. And that, of course, means that they they're going to begin to really collapse a to right. on to themselves below. And, um, Maya Shea, and we did get a shot, I believe, just a moment ago, a, uh, a jam cam shot there of the uh, East Loop at Gellhorn, and you could see just how thick that smoke was. There you go, as you can look out onto the freeway. You can see that the, uh, the uh, roads are almost completely blocked at this point. You, there is just no way to move almost Causing in any direction. Causing a real slowdown there. Yeah. yeah, just stay away from the East Loop altogether. And Maya Shea has been on the scene. She's continuing trying to effort some uh, interviews there with some of those rescued as well as uh, uh, the, the fire chiefs on the scene there. This is now three alarm blaze. So we have a lot of individuals there, a lot of firefighters um, trying to get in and out of that building and put this blaze out. It is. It is just growing worse uh, by the minute here and continuing to spread. Uh, Chief, we want to go back to Chief Dowdy. Chief, can you tell us, have you managed to get everybody out of the building? That's unknown at this time. We know, we've not been able to get an exact count of how many people were in the building at the time this started. I know that we've, we've brought several down on the aerial ladder. We've brought some down from inside. And right now, we do not have a, a, a confirmed count of how many people were in the building when this thing started, so I can't answer if we got them all out. But so, so you're, you're just not able to answer whether you have everyone out, but what about the firefighters? Are they continuing to search inside then? We have teams inside right now. So for, their only priority right now is search and rescue. That's, we're not even, we're, we're setting up water supplies, but right now we're not even attempting to put the fire out until we make sure that we got everybody out. Chief, how dangerous is it to go into a building like this? Well, it's, it's not a, you know, we don't believe it's a 911 just because the fire is venting out the windows and it doesn't the building, the building is, is compromised at this point, but it's really hard to say. You know, we don't make a whole lot of high rises with this much fire coming out of them. So I'm sure the incident commander is going to be very careful. People committed on the lower floors, uh, trying to find people. I'm sure there are people closed up in offices. We've had calls of dispatch where people have said they're closed up in offices. So it's going to be a door to door search to find the people and get them down. Right. But, Chief, is it even possible to search those top two floors at this point? Not at this point, no ma'am. But at least, as you say, there may be some people holed up in closets somewhere, just afraid to come out in the lower floors, right? Well, I'm saying I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're they're in there trying to get out of the smoke, and that would probably be a good way to do it. So that'll, that's what it'll take. It'll take for us to literally go door to door inside the officers' closets, under desks, and uh, that's what that's what they'll do inside. Wow. So right now, all you're doing is concentrating on every floor below the fourth floor. Is that right? Correct. Below five, one through four. One through four. Uh, well, Chief, so right now you're no longer putting any water on the building. You are just strictly doing search and rescue. Correct. All right. And you're also trying to maintain, I guess, some kind of count, some kind of idea who was in the building before all this broke out? Well, hopefully they'll be able to talk to some of the building personnel and maybe we can get a good count. That may be difficult because this, this is a, uh, it's probably, looks, it look from the side, it looks to be about maybe 15 separate businesses inside this building. So it may be, it may be a while before we get an accurate count. Chief, how many firefighters do you believe are inside the building now on the lower floors? I have no idea. Do you have any better idea how this fire started? No, not yet. But we're way away from that. Now, okay. how concerned are you about the, the integrity of the building being compromised with that tremendous heat on the upper floors and whether that might cause an internal collapse somewhere? 
Well, that's hard to say. Like I said, we don't we don't make enough of these to really get good at it. We don't really want to make enough to get good at them. But it doesn't appear at this point we have no there's no sagging floors, so it doesn't appear the structure is in, in, in jeopardy at this point. Well, uh, Chief, you've got to be concerned as well about the roof because it looks as though that gave way just a bit ago. Well, uh, obviously that that's above us, and that's that's not as big an issue to us as the floor trusses. So as long as those four beams stay in, we'll be in good shape. All right, Chief. Well, we know you've got a lot of, lot to worry about at this point, and we just appreciate you taking a couple of moments to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What a frightening situation that firefighters have here on the East Loop. A six-story building continuing to burn and rage out of, out of control. You have a tower inferno here. And uh, we've had several people rescued only in the past 10 minutes or so. You've had about five or six people who came down the ladder. And then uh, about 15 minutes before that, you had another couple of individuals coming down that ladder. Uh, smoke inhalation, of course, a problem. And the frightening situation, as the chief said, the integrity of the, the, the internal structure of the building, no doubt, has been compromised because of the tremendous heat, he says. And, and it's just... They haven't dealt a lot with these types of uh, That's right, with high rises in infernos, Houston, right. exactly. They have not had a lot of fires like this. And at this point, they're also very concerned about, um, obviously, people inside the buildings um, from literally floor four down. They cannot do anything about the top two floors, five and six. But they are searching door to door, he says, uh, behind every door, under desk, everything. For the bottom four floors at this point and he says uh, they do know that there have been some people inside calling for help and they are trying to go through and look for every single person that might be left inside they don't know if there is anyone on those top two floors but obviously at this point there may not be anything they can do about and that. you've noticed as well they have uh, they are still continuing to spray the water of course on those upper floors and what can you do at this point but just spray the water and continue to search the lower four floors and, you know, searching for those individuals who are holed up possibly in offices uh, would be a frightening thing. But some people, uh, you know, they don't dare come out because they're afraid uh, and possibly there's a lot of smoke around. But when you're in a situation like that, that's what the, off uh, the firefighters are trained to do. And they continue to do even at this time. But as the chief said, they're not real familiar with these types of uh, high structure uh, fires and there this is this is a training exercise to for them as much as it is uh, one in which will we'll, we'll give them an experience that they will possibly never forget but he says he doesn't like this kind of experience that they can possibly avoid it but they are dealing with it as best they possibly can Dave Ward is joining me now on the set as uh, Art Rascone leads us we are watching a fire very closely right now, a high-rise fire that has gone to three alarms at uh, the East Loop and Gellhorn, really between Gellhorn and Wallaceville Road. And traffic is very backed up at that uh, point on the road. So if you are going that way or have someone you're expecting home right now, uh, it's going to be a long time before they get there. This fire broke out just about an hour ago, around 5 o'clock. It uh, has grown to three alarm proportions. They have rescued at least seven to ten people out of that office building. And as we have been reporting to you, we're still not sure if there are any people still left in the building that need to be rescued. As you can see there, traffic on the East Loop is a mess in this area. They're still pouring water on the fire in the upper two floors. And they are still attempting to search the bottom four floors for anybody who might still be left inside. Maya Shea is on the phone right now. She's live at the scene with uh, uh, whatever information she's been able to bring to us. And Maya, you watched those last five rescuers be brought down ladders just a few moments ago. What have you got for us? Well, you know, it's just been such a dramatic last uh, 20 minutes or so. The, uh, the five individuals are all being treated at an ambulance right now. We did manage to get a few words in with a couple of them a little earlier, so a little later on, I wouldn't see. We'll definitely bring you those interviews. But for now, I want to tell you, these folks say they feel very, very lucky, but they are amazingly calm. We talked to at least several people, four or five people, either came in, coming down on the ladder truck or making their way all the way down through more alarm proportions it is a four alarm fire there on the east loop and as you can see the flames are still 
on the fifth and sixth floors, the two top floors of the building, but it does seem to be down, diminishing a little bit from what it was earlier. But you can certainly see all of the fire equipment out there in front, all the fire trucks. You can see that the uh, frontage road, for the most part, is completely blocked off at this point. And the freeway, when we saw the uh, jam cam shot just a moment ago, uh, the traffic is almost uh, at a complete standstill there um, on the east loop going towards Wallaceville Road, between Wallaceville and Gellhorn there. Wallaceville exit has been blocked off by police. They're still allowing traffic to flow on the loop, but as a, a, a greatly reduced rate, you, the smoke makes it almost impossible to see. And for those of you who live in this area, there will be other emergency vehicles headed to this scene in the 9300 block of the East Loop uh, because the fire just went to four alarm proportions. Now you can see that smoke is so thick, uh, it's covered both sides of, of the loop. Uh, uh, motorist really having to travel very slowly to get through that smoke. That's right, almost impossible to even see in either direction at this point. Yeah. Reporter Maya Shea is on the phone. Did you talk with someone else who was rescued from this fire, Maya? Well, we thought Maya Shea yeah, was on the telephone. May have lost Maya Shea there. We are looking at a live Sky HD shot right now above the building, and you can see them pouring a lot more water now on top of the building here. Um, again, using those ladders. We saw some men just a moment ago uh, on top of one of those ladders, but right now it appears as though they are using uh, using them more uh, remotely. But I believe they're we pulling are that ladder down. Are they we now? saw two firefighters on a snorkel truck a okay. few minutes ago, yeah. but then we also saw one ladder that just had a high pressure nozzle up on it being used to, to fight the fire. I we believe do. Maya is now back. Why don't yes, we go to Maya, Maya Shea there? on the telephone? Hey there, uh, I'm standing with uh, some guys. I'm beginning to call the three amigos. These are the three men who you saw being rescued. That's what came down the ladder truck. I want to talk to Bill right here. But, you know, yeah. oh, this is Bill. What's your name? Dennis. Dennis, Dennis uh, who is uh, one of the several accountants who are working in this um, in this office. Now, I'm going to hand the phone over, so go talk to you guys. And feel free to ask me some questions. Dennis, tell us what happened. Uh, I was on the fourth floor working, and uh, we heard a commotion outside. Oh. And uh, we... Uh, Started looking around and saw the smoke out in the hallway and headed for the stairways. When we got to the stairs, the uh, smoke was already up into the fourth floor and we couldn't get out. So we went back into our office, uh, out of the barricade ourselves in, broke the window and just waited for the fire department to come. Uh, Maya, Maya, are was... you there? Hold on. Is Maya there? Hello? Yes, this is Maya. Maya, were those the three men that were on the ladder that we saw? Yes, I'm standing here with all three men who are actually on the ladder. We talked to one of the ladies as well, and they're all actually accountants. You know, it's tax season. They're keeping very, very busy with all their customers and all the work they had to do. So this is the last thing certainly they expected. Maya, could you ask them if all of their co-workers got out of the building, if they know that all of their co-workers got out? And as far as you know, did all of your co-workers get out of the yes, building? Yes, everybody made it out. Mark, you know, is anybody else still left in the building? We couldn't tell, to be honest. We ran back into the hours just as soon as we saw the smoke. And, you know, I was talking to some of these, uh, one of the ladies who actually was with these uh, three men as well, and she said that the smoke got so thick, they actually broke a window and uh, waited for the ladder to come, and it finally did, and they were able to be rescued, and now are very, very relieved. They are uh, firmly on land, on the ground, and away from the building. And they did say that all of their co-workers have been accounted for? Right, as far as they understand, all of their co-workers are accounted for, but this is one of those buildings with a number of smaller offices and mm. uh, some different companies, so... You know, for one accounting office, they said their people are accounted for. It does not mean that every other company has been accounted for. I think that's something the building management, a number of other people are trying to kind of go through and see what's going on right now. Right, we understand that. This is just one company on one floor, and their employees got out. But there are any number of other companies on the other, uh, well, it's a six-story building. The upper two floors, the fifth and sixth, totally involved in flames when this went to four alarm proportions. Maya, now I did notice that uh, you said they all remained very calm. Was that because the five of them were together and they just sort of talked each other down? 
We may have lost Maya Shea there on the telephone. We are back to looking now at the uh, East Loop. It appears as though the smoke has been reduced just slightly. We're seeing just a little bit better than we were a few moments ago. It's not as thick as it yeah, was. Yeah, just a little bit uh, better. But uh, as you can see, there are still an awful lot of emergency vehicles there on the frontage road. And if uh, you are planning on coming this way or you are expecting anybody who is traveling this way to be headed home, it's going to be a very long, slow commute for them this evening because this fire is still very much uh, involved. They are still, uh, they've still got a lot of work ahead before this is over. The access road there at um, the East Loop at Gellhorn is completely blocked by the firefighting and emergency equipment. There are also a number of ambulances standing by there. That's the shot of this. This is these are live pictures you're seeing. Those two firefighters still up on that. Uh, snorkel truck pouring water into the fifth and sixth floors of the building. So far as we've been able to determine, they have been able to keep the flames confined to the fifth and sixth floors, we believe. We don't think it spread downward to the fourth floor. And in fact, now we're not seeing very much in the way of fire pouring out as we were just a few moments ago. We've got Kevin Quinn now live on the telephone from Memorial Hermann Hospital where the first patients have arrived. Kevin? Okay, Melody, our representative with Mario Herman confirming for us now that one patient is arriving here shortly at Memorial Herman Hospital, Texas Medical Center from this place. The spokesperson cannot say what the condition of that patient is. Obviously very critical, otherwise they wouldn't have been brought here. They are checking now to see if there are other patients on the way, if those patients, maybe those not as injured, uh, may be taken to the Northeast Herman facility. That spokesperson getting back to us shortly, but now we have confirmed one person being life flighted to Memorial Herman Hospital in the Texas Medical Center. Morning. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. And while you were talking, we did at least see one person on a stretcher there. Um, several EMS workers uh, move, removing at least one person. We don't know if it was just smoke inhalation or if there are other injuries. And as we understand it, uh, there are still firefighters going door to door inside the building. The bottom four floor is still looking for anybody who may still be left inside. These are live pictures. You can see flames on the roof of this six-story office building. There have been no firefighters able to get up to the roof area yet. There you can see some flames still inside the fifth and sixth floors of this six-story building. And we have been told by the, uh, the district chief that they will not attempt at this point to even go to the fifth and sixth floors. He does have firefighters inside. They are very concerned because uh, they do not often work high-rise fires in Houston. And this is not something that they are especially well acquainted with, and nor do they want to be, frankly. Um, but they are, at this point, really working this as a search and rescue mission, still looking inside the building for anybody who may have been left inside. Gene Apodaca is now on the ground. He is live at the scene, and we are able to see him. Gene, what can you tell us? Well, Melanie, you can see that fire raging right behind me, as we mentioned, the fifth and sixth floors of that building. We've been talking to people that were inside of that building we talked to a woman just a short time ago her name Letitia Tillman she tells me that she was on the fourth floor she actually didn't hear any alarms that in fact a friend driving by the building actually had to call her to let her know that there was a fire raging in that building she also said that it was a frantic scene as people tried to get out of that building we've been talking to other folks again on the, a woman on the second floor telling us that she did hear an alarm so there is conflicting reports whether or not an alarm went off in this building now Tillman tells us that in fact she believes most everyone on her floor or at least her co-workers got out of that building but they are concerned about one employee who was unaccounted for she says she doesn't have an update on that employee so obviously a lot of tense time as that fire rages still behind me okay thank you gene now 18 minutes past six o'clock this is a four alarm fire in the 9300 block of the east loop uh, traffic on the loop is slow to a uh, crawl and the access road there and the 9300 block of the East Loop is closed completely on the side where the fire vehicles are as you can see that that is the Wallaceville Road exit and Wallaceville Road exit has been blocked this fire has been uh, burning now for well over an hour and a half I suppose and we do have a report of one person injured taken to a hospital and we saw another person being taken out of the fire on an on a uh, 
on a stretcher being taken to an ambulance. We do not know conditions uh, or identities of any of these people. And we've been watching at least seven uh, live rescues on the air between uh, about 5.20 and now. And we know of at least several more. Some people we've been hearing from who said they managed to get out by going down the stairway because the elevator did not allow them. Uh, they could not get out via the elevator because of the fire being so hot during the elevator shaft. But we want to go now to the newsroom. And Tom Abrams is in the newsroom to tell us a little bit more about the difficulty of fighting these high-rise fires. Tom? Well, Melanie, as you know, it's been five and a half years since the last high-rise fire in the city of Houston, that one being in the gallery at the Four Leaf Towers when Captain Jay Yankee died, was killed fighting that fire, which was started by a cigarette. We have a copy of the plan that the city of Houston uses to fight high-rise fires. It's very different than if they were to go to a home or a smaller building. It was last updated in May 2003. And here's what we can tell you about the way the city of Houston goes about fighting high-rise fires. In these buildings, and they're characterized as being 75 feet or taller, prior to there ever being any sort of incident, each building owner and management has to have a fire plan. They can, the fire department consults with building management. They have an emergency response personnel team that is supposed to be there in the event of an incident like this. Uh, there are supposed to be fire drills on a regular basis. Once there is a fire in a building such as this one, 75 feet or taller, there is supposed to be someone knowledgeable about the building who is there to meet the fire department. There are supposed to be maps. There's supposed to be a fire command station uh, at the building so that they can coordinate the fire fighting efforts as best possible. And they say uh, when they have these sorts of situations, the first thing they want to do is immobilize uh, the elevators. That's the first thing. And the people who work at that building or who manage it are supposed to know this to make firefighters' jobs easier and to make it a little bit safer for those who are inside. They're also supposed to be familiar with all the locations of the exits, the stairwells. Uh, they have priority floors, and those priority floors uh, in terms of fire safety are the fire floor itself, one floor above and one floor below the fire. So those are what the fire department considers the priority floors when they are fighting a high-rise fire. Uh, the safety in terms of the other floors is kind of a case-by-case -case basis. So this is a plan that was updated in 03 when Chris Keneally was fire chief of the city of Houston. There were a lot of changes in the way that they went about fighting these high-rise fires, in fact, after the death of Captain Jay Yankee in October of 2001. One of those was the kinds of tanks that firefighters have, and we'll be interested to learn the size of the oxygen tanks these firefighters have, because part of what they think might have killed Captain Yankee was that he didn't have enough air and he asphyxiated. So instead of using 30-minute tanks, which is what firefighters usually use, uh, there was a, an immense effort to get 60-minute tanks on as many fire engines as possible uh, so that as many firefighters as possible would have uh, twice as long to fight a fire from inside when there is thick, immense smoke. And I can tell you, I've been through a firefighter academy before for the media and the smoke is absolutely unbelievable. You cannot see your hand in front of your face when you're in a building that is filled with smoke like what you see there, whether it's white, whether it's black. You can't see anything. It's, it's very disconcerting. And so anyone who's in that building, uh, even the, the most trained firefighter, is in a difficult situation. But we'll keep updating you on what we learn about the way the fire department goes about fighting these unusual sorts of fires. Again, Melanie Dave, it's been five and a half years as the chief said, it doesn't happen very often. They have these kinds of situations. Well, fortunately, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, the, the, you're looking at, li at live pictures of Houston firefighters battling a four alarm blaze in a six story office building in the 9300 block of the East Loop. Yeah. There is one other, another, uh, uh, well, I can't tell if there's a person on that gurney or no, not. It is I think it's just tell. equipment. Yeah. But at any rate, there are a number of ambulances there. Let's go back to Gene Apodaca on the ground. Has some ground video for us now, Gene. Yeah, Dave, you can see that fire raging behind me, but we did get some shots of the video from the ground just a short time ago. You can see on that video, actually, if we had that video, the firefighters there trying to, uh, to put out this blaze. At one point, there was a person who apparently was rescued from that video. You can see, uh, rescued from that building, rather. She's on the video, and you can actually see that person being wheeled out. Um, we apparently don't have that video right now, but there you can see the flames and the smoke that we have been talking about from the fifth and sixth floors. Now, I talked to a couple of people inside the building, one woman on the second floor who said that she actually heard an alarm and she ran out of the building. Her and several of her coworkers ran out of that building and were able to get out safely. 
Then we talked to a woman who was on the fourth floor who said there was no alarm, that a friend actually called her at the office, saw the fire as she was driving by, and that was her first indication that there was a fire inside the building. Here are a couple people we talked to just a short time ago. Well, I was working, I was going to be working late. I work on the fourth floor, and we were in the building, and um, fortunately, my cousin, she just left at five. She, uh, she called me on the phone to tell me that someone had ran into the building saying that they could see flames coming from the highway. She called me to tell me that, and once I, I started, I was sitting there turning things off, and I was choking, and there was no warning, no alarms, no sounds, or nothing. And, and when, we, when we come out, somebody smoking in the building a few weeks ago. When we come up in there, and you can see the smoke begin to just come into the lobby area, pretty, so we got out just in the, just in time. Pretty uh, Like right now, I'm still concerned about one of our workers because we haven't heard from her yet, and she's in the adjacent office to ours up here in the corner on the fourth floor and uh, we're just still trying to hear from her. I've asked them if they've checked everything and they said they did, and, but we're still waiting. We, we just still don't know. Yeah, and that obviously the situation out here is firefighters continue to search that building. They tell us they do not know if uh, all the people are accounted for in this six-story building behind us. But again, the fifth and sixth floors apparently suffering the most damage here. Residents, uh, or rather tenants inside that building, telling us that they heard the fire alarms. Some told us that they didn't hear the, hear the fire alarms. Some of them running for their lives as they get the word that there was an actual fire inside that building. Describe it as a terrifying scene. And as you heard, some of those co-workers still unaccounted for guys. Thank you, Gene. That smoke, as you can see, that's pretty thick white smoke. It's staying low to the ground. Tim Heller's here with us. Tim, can you explain to why this smoke's not going up in the air? Well, the winds are pretty strong. In fact, they've been strong all afternoon, blowing out of the southeast about 15 to 25 miles an hour. If your winds are light, you're going to find that that plume goes almost straight up. But uh, we talked earlier with the uh, with the chief was saying that the wind was also the problem with that it was fueling the fire, that the mm -hmm. windows on the south side of the building had blown out. The wind coming into it allowed the fire to spread a little bit faster. So it's, it's doing a couple of things. It's spreading the smoke and it's also fueling the fires. As a matter of fact, you can see there, this is uh, the little uh, red triangle there indicates the location of the fire. And you can see the wind speeds right now are right out of the southeast. And sustained winds are at about 25, or I'm sorry, about 15 miles an hour. But we've seen gusts closer to 25 miles an hour this mm -hmm. afternoon. Are they going to get any help? Are the winds going to slow down? Well, or the anything? winds probably won't relax until well after sunset tonight. And we're still an hour away from sunset. So I would expect we're going to see the winds for the next hour staying at about 15 to 25. Right. And as a result, this smoke is blowing right across the east loop uh, and giving motorists fits out there because at times it's almost impossible to see through it. it visibility is very limited. It looks a little thinner now. Yeah. They, maybe they're getting a, a, a head of that blaze and maybe they're starting to to uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel and getting this thing put out. But the smoke is less dense now than it was before. Yeah. Well, we've got uh, Laura Whitley here on the set joining us. She's going to talk a little bit about this building. We're finding out bits and pieces about some of, some of the tenants in that building. And uh, specifically, as we heard from Gina Apodaca there, we know that there were several different kinds of professional offices there. You found out even more. Several different types of professional offices, a lot of doctor offices, chiropractic, clinics, there's some dental offices there. Um, we all, One thing that was pretty concerning that we found out is for some of these businesses, around 5 o'clock when this fire started, that's the busiest time of day for some of these businesses. One uh, gentleman, a doctor I talked to, he told me his office is packed normally that time of day. Now he's on the first floor, so he has already heard from everyone in his office and everyone's been accounted for, and so he was grateful for that, that everyone had gotten out. But he was concerned, obviously, for some of those tenants and some of the public that may have been visiting those offices that are, were on some of those upper floors. He estimates that there's about eight offices on each floor and there are six floors. So, you know, that's a couple dozen offices at least, up, up to 48 or so. Uh, he said there's also a surgical suite on one of those floors. Uh, we know that there's a cosmetic dentistry office on the fifth floor uh, where that building started, So there's a, uh, where the fire started. So there's a lot of uh, different offices there. And again, people both who work in the building and people from the general public who may have been visiting one of these offices may have been there at that time uh, when the fire started. So, uh, you know, a lot of concern you know you figure the tenants the people who work in this building are familiar with it probably knew immediately how to get out what to do they may have practiced some type of 
pre-planned fire escape plan, but you know, if I had was just going there to the doctor, I may not know exactly the best escape route. So yeah, and uh, we're watching right now uh, live pictures as we continue to see the firefighters pouring more water on flames, and the flames continue to break through the roof here. Are we? Are, are most of the offices in this building medical facilities? I, the ones that I've been able to, to pull up, uh, like I said, there's dentists, there's eye doctors, uh, there's some, a podiatrist, there's chiropractors, but there's also a florist, uh, there's a bridal business that's there, there's a, a, some type of work source that looks like a job search type business, is, business we there. We an accounting and, office, exactly. we heard them talking so, about So that. They, they, really, they really run the gamut, but there are definitely some businesses that, you know, people visit and are, you know, where clients would be and you know coming to visit this office it's uh, of course 43 uh, 9343 North Loop East it's right there near Wallaceville Road um, off the North Loop very close to the ship channel so again traffic has has got to be a problem and you know it's interesting the flames um, as you mentioned are still coming out and really that's because I know from going to all, many of these scenes the fire department when they arrive at a scene the first thing they do is look for people that are in right. the building that is their number one mission and that's why uh, we probably didn't see a lot of water going onto the fire immediately because that's not really what they're there for right at the beginning they're there to get people out that's and right. that's exactly what they did well they've right. been pouring water on it now for quite some time and the the uh, uh, smoke has diminished we can see uh, a, a dramatic a reduction in the amount of white smoke coming out of that building so apparently they are finally getting a hand on it and the